Things a week going on in our daily lives and we tend to, you know, praise a lot of things. But how many of the ever praise belong to our God? Hallelujah.
movies in our lives, amen? This is something un unusual that I'm about to do, but I want to take at least five seconds just to hear some praises without the music, just some hallelujahs and thank you, Jesus, to let God know that you appreciate my how appreciate him how far he brought you. Amen. Amen. Can we give God some praise just about five seconds with no music, some hallelujahs that God, I thank you. Anybody to appreciate God on today? Anybody love God on today? Anybody thank you for how far he has brought you and where he's going to take you? Amen. With this, with this second, Delta Bible is coming out. They say it's dangerous in the first. That means we got to be more careful. Amen. And not only be more careful, we got to have more Jesus. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I, I, I need more of Jesus. I need more of Jesus. I can't speak for everybody else, but Stacy need more of Jesus. Amen. Amen. But we know God is able to do anything but fail. Amen. Just like he protect us through the first pandemic, I believe and ain't no doubt in my mind that he'll protect us through the second one. Amen. God is able. God is able to do anything but fail. Do anybody agree with me on today? And I understand that the hot day day you probably did what you did yesterday, but today is the day to give God the praise. You never
thank God for our deacons and our praise team. Amen. Amen. Lifting up the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. It's good to be here. Amen. We could have been somewhere else at this time. Amen. But the Lord saw fit. And we are able to come together. Amen. And praise his name. I appreciate everybody. Amen. It's just a few of us, but I appreciate all of us Amen. coming together to worship God. Amen. 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 We're going to Romans chapter 5, verse number 1. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 5. An epistle to the Romans. Amen. Chapter 5, verse number 1. And I'm just going to be brief today for our Sunday School Bible study. Amen. Covered all of the essentials. Amen. 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 Just to add my little bit to it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 5, verse 1, King James Version of the Bible says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. You may take your seats. We like to talk about not guilty. Not guilty. Amen. If you're ever, amen, in a courtroom and you're there because you are convicted of a crime, what you ought to want to hear from the judge or the jury is what? Not guilty. Not guilty. Yes, amen. Yes, Glad to have, amen, Sister Jerry Walker with us today, amen. We're praying for her and her family, yes, amen, and Brother Walker, amen, yes, on the transition of Sister Jerry Walker's father. We're praying for her. She's here with us today, but we are continuing to pray for her strength in the Lord. Amen. We'll continue to pray for the Young family. Amen. The Nelsons and Amen. Amen. And young brother. Amen. Right is right. Young brother. Young. Amen. We're praying for both of them. Both of those families. Turn. Brother, brother Turn. Praying for both of those families. Amen. We're praying for Minister Verdeen Booker. Amen. And my understanding is she's in ICU in Jonesburg at this time. We're praying uh, for her today. Amen. The Lord is able. Amen. The Lord is able. Now today's text, uh, this is an epistle. Amen. If you turn back, amen, it's an epistle to the Romans. Paul is uh, better known as the writer of this particular epistle or letter. Now Paul was sent to the uh, to the uh, to the uh, Gentiles, yeah. Paul was sent to the Gentiles. In other words, people who were thought to be unable to be saved. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. So Paul was sent to the Gentiles, and he is writing an epistle to the Romans. And in this book of a letter to the Romans, he is very very uh, concise and and particular because in the book of Romans you can get a summary of the whole Bible. In this letter to the Romans, you can get an idea of what the whole Bible is all about. Because here in Romans, Paul takes his time to tell you how we are saved. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And he's particular to talk to even the Jews who feel like the Gentiles have to do everything that God told them to do to be saved. Such as be circumcised. All right. yes, sir. He takes circumcision to another level. He says, no, what we need is circumcision of the heart. All right. We need to be changed in our mind. Sometimes heart, we, can, we sometimes think of when we talk about how we think in our mind. So is a man thinking. So is he. Yes, sir. So amen, amen. Sometimes you get treated so bad because you think of yourself too lonely. You don't think you deserve anything. Amen. And you wind up getting or receiving exactly what you think about yourself. There are some things, amen, you ought to say that I'm not going to take anymore. All right. I'm better than that. I'm not going to do that. 
Because you think better than that. You think higher than that. Amen. We know the thoughts of God are higher than our thoughts. Amen. 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 We can't think like God, but we ought to be able to get in the area. Amen. 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 Somebody, you know what? You know what? If you're going to be lifted up, amen. Glad to see Brother MacDowell with us. Amen. Amen. If you're going to be lifted up, you got to change your way of thinking. Let me say that one more time. If you're going to be changed, you got to change your way of thinking. Amen. And if your children are going to be changed, you have to change their way of thinking. You got to tell your little girl, no, you don't have to take that off nobody. You don't have to take that off no young man to have a boyfriend now. If he's going to be your boyfriend, he need to think. All right. No, you're missing that. You're missing that. But if you don't change her focus, if you don't change what they think about, they will think themselves too low. Now, we come to God humble and low. Amen. Because we are beneath him. Yeah, you don't hear me yet. But in this world, you have to think. So is a man thinking, so is he. If you don't think you're saved, no wonder you're living the way you live. Uh -huh. Man, some people don't yes, see sir. themselves as being saved. Yes, so, so here Paul has to write a letter and give a description on what, how salvation works. Sunday school lesson talked about reconciliation. Yes, sir. Meaning, how do we bring this relationship into a right standing? Uh -huh. How do we bring this relationship into a right standing? Uh -huh. Some of the definitions we used in Sunday school was justified. We talked about being justified or justification. To be justified is to be said that you're not guilty. All right, man. Yes, it it means it's imputed to you that you're not guilty, that you're righteous, that you're right, that you're living right. How can that be so? He's going to tell us. Paul is going to take his time to tell us how can we have righteousness imputed to us. Yes, I told you, you know, you can say, uh, you can look at your bank account and you say, you, say you did all the math and your math say you have zero dollars. Amen. And some kind of way, some kind of way, some kind of way, it's been put in your account. You have a hundred dollars. Amen. A hundred dollars has been deposited in your account that you didn't work for. You have no knowledge of, of how it got there, but all of a sudden your balance is now one hundred dollars. Uh -huh. And if you don't know, it was, a, it was somebody by the grace of God. Yes, Amen. It was a free gift. Somebody gave it to you. Somebody missed the count. Amen. You have a hundred dollars. It has been given to you. And when you ask for your balance, your balance is one hundred dollars. I didn't work for it. I, I didn't put it there. I'm not going to tell you about you stole it. I said you didn't put it there. Amen. And so it's been imputed to you. So I'm, I'm going to go back and describe a little bit how Paul says it takes place. But we know that sin has a price. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. That means if you mess up, the little lie you told, it deserves what? Death. You stole somebody's ink pen. Deserves You know, we, there's no big sins and little sins. Sin is sin. Now the Bible says all have sin. Even the wrong thoughts is a sin. I shouldn't have went there, should Because I had some bad thoughts. And on, you Come had on, some bad on, thoughts. Yeah, and you said, I wish I had. And you said, I wish I had a gone. And you said, I should have played this. And I, you know. Oh, I really like his wife. Oh, I love her. <laughs> <laughs> and while you was watching that movie, you said, Oh, his muscle. Oh, if I had him instead of one I got. Sin is sin. See, the Bible tells you to capture those thoughts and cast them out. Cast them down. Cast them down. All imagination. What's imagination? That ain't real. Yet. <laughs> because if you keep thinking that way, more than likely it won't be too long before you what? Go that 
way. See, wait, wait, wait. I ain't gonna try not to be long today. I ain't got notes, but I'm gonna try not to be long today. Listen to me, listen to me. The Bible also talks about the tongue, how we talk, how we speak. But, but, but see, out of the mouth, the mouth speak is out of the abundance of the heart. Yeah. You, you can, I'm, I'm, I'm in scripture now, you might not know it, but you ain't the Bible. See, out of the mouth, the, the mouth speak is out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth is speaking out of the abundance of what you've been thinking. That's right. Yeah. All right. Lord have mercy. Oh, we done messed up now. Oh, I shouldn't have said you've been thanking that trash. You've been thanking that mess. Your, your imagination. The Bible says either. You, when you see something that's not like God, the Bible says you ought to cast it down and then you ought to put your mind on things above. Yes, sir. Uh, things, heavenly things. You ought to put your mind on things what God said to do. God said don't do that. When that thought come across, you want that other man's love with yourself. Uh, the Bible says, cover God, thy neighbor's wife. Okay. I should go after her. That's his wife. I, I, the Lord can have one for me. Amen. Or the Lord can make the one I have better. Yeah. If I put my investment in God, God has a way of bringing this thing around. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. back here. Right. Paul is wanting to tell the Romans, you don't have to be a Jew in order to be saved, Lord have mercy. Yes, sir. You don't have to become a Jew. You don't have to wear a little cap up in the center of your head to be saved. You don't have to be one of the 12 tribes of Israel in order to be saved. What you have to have is faith in what Jesus Christ has already done for us. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. How can I be saved if I'm not of the children of Israel? Uh, hey, if I'm not a Hebrew, how can I be saved? And then you want to say, well, what Paul had to tell him, because some of the Jews wanted to, you know, you know how somebody, they, they hate what they got to go through, so they want to beat some of that on you. Uh -huh. you. You know what I'm saying? Somebody being punished, they want you to join in with their punishment. Amen. You know, you need to be helping me because you ain't right either. Uh -huh. And all that kind of stuff. But, but see, he told the other Jews, don't be trying to put circumcision on them. Don't be trying to put all that other stuff on them. They are saved just like Abraham was. Abraham was not a Jew, but he was a father of the Jewish nation. But he's their father because he originated the promise. He, God made a promise to him. And Abraham believed the promise. So we, as Gentile, those who are not Jews, amen, in the flesh, amen, they can be saved because they believe the promise. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, there was a promise made. What promise? I'm going to let your, your seed out number the stars. And no, look, he said something else. Whoever bless you, they shall be blessed. Yes, sir. Some people are blessed because they give you faith. Uh -huh. All right. Some jobs have to shut down because you work there. Mm -hmm. no. They're being blessed because God's showing them faith because of you. All right. Some families are being blessed because there's a member in the family who shows a faith in God. Here it is in chapter 5, verse number 1. Therefore being justified, made right. You're not guilty by faith. Because if you're guilty, you know you're going to open up your eyes in hell. He says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, now how can we be reconciled so we can have peace with God? We want peace with God because he's the, the judge. All right. He's the one who's going to make the judgment on us. We want peace with God. We want to be whole with God. We want to be made right with God in order to have the blessing. Amen. Keep All going. Right. This. So by whom also we have access by faith into his grace right. wherein we stand and rejoice. Somebody uh, talked about that word access and said sometimes we need to think of that word as presence. All right. We're able to come in God's presence because we have been justified by yes, faith right. and, and then we have his grace. God's grace is his unmerited favor. He does things for you that you didn't work to obtain. You couldn't, you couldn't work for it. He's giving you stuff that you didn't work for. Amen. The picture the Bible paints is a roof in the Bible. 
where Ruth is going after uh, what's his name, Boaz. Yes, sir. And, and she goes to work in his field, and Boaz tells his workers, I want y'all to start dropping stuff in the field on purpose so she can pick it up. Drop it on purpose. Amen. Amen. She's going to come behind y'all and pick up the stuff that's left, but I want y'all to start dropping stuff on purpose. Then he started telling me, leave that, she don't get that. Yes, sir. He started dropping. So that's what God does for us. He drops blessings down to us Amen. on purpose. Yes. Uh, let him catch this heel. Yes. Let him catch that wife. Let him catch that hood. Mm -hmm. Let those children be blessed with a father. Let those children be blessed with a mother. I, I, I'm, I'm going to drop this house on purpose. I'm going to drop this job, this promotion on purpose. They don't deserve it. They didn't work for it. Matter of fact, they were late too many times. They should have been five. But I'm going to give them a promotion on purpose. you got to know who to praise and know who's dropping your blessings. Yeah. No, you didn't work for it. No, you didn't, you didn't come in our Sunday school class. You didn't get enough certificates to get it. But God designed you to be blessed. Yeah. And he says that not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Now he said now, when you got right standing with God, when you go through trouble, this should give you confidence to stand. He said, now you being saved is not going to keep you from going through some stuff. All right. Now some folks, guys, because I went to church, I shouldn't have no problem, no flat tires, no arguments in the house. I shouldn't have, you know, I shouldn't stomp my toe. I shouldn't owe no bills because I'm saved. He says, no, no, no. You got to learn how to glory when you go through trouble. Matter of fact, the Bible says, count it all joy when you fall into battle different yes, temptation. Yes, so how do you do that? He said, you got to have confidence. Mm -hmm. you got to know that when you go through trouble, that's working something. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. God is ready to give you something you need when you go through trouble with the right mindset. All right. Yes, sir. Did you hear me? We, you got to go through with the right mindset, uh, Brother Pate. Yes, you got to say, now, this trouble has come on me for a reason, and I want to get out of this trouble with the right mindset. I'm thanking God. I, hey, I'm going through, Lord. I'm counting it all junk. I, I ain't happy because I fell in it. But I'm happy you're dropping something off on purpose. Hey. Watch this. Watch this. He said, look, look, look. He said, he said, look, when you get in those tribulations, glory and tribulation also, knowing that tribulation works patience. Uh -huh. Tribulation works perseverance. We're going to be able to to hold on when we go through stuff is going to make us stronger. Yes, sir. It's going to make us more consistent. Let, 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 me, let, let me focus on something. And I got to get out of here because Jerry don't like when I stay long. Listen, listen, listen. Listen. I don't think Brother Rowe would like it either. But look. See, when the pandemic came, Sister Robinson, so, hey, let me tell you what happened. When the pandemic came, people started consistently praying. Amen. Amen. Pandemic would be a tribulation. Uh -huh. That's trouble. Yes, sir. Trouble came, and people all of a sudden started being patient. Uh -huh. They started to have consistency in their prayer life. Yeah. They started seeking God on a consistent basis. Tribulation works consistency or perseverance. Uh -huh. oh, and you thought trouble wasn't doing nothing. It's going to make you more consistent. Yeah. Yeah. He knows how to bring you to your knees. Yeah. If you allow it to work in your life. Yeah. Some folks try to ignore it. Yeah. They do worse. Trouble come. They get worse. But if you're going to get any better, you allow tribulation to work to employ consistency and perseverance. Amen. And then what does it say? And patience works what? Experience. Yes. Now when you go through some stuff, you can stand some more stuff. You're stronger. Yeah. Baby in Christ, you know, you go, you, you go through one thing, right? You, you're an old one now, and you know I know some of y'all got experience. I'm going to tell you what you got there, too. Y'all know how y'all first owed that bill, y'all got something there. Now you got so much experience, you know when they're going to cut the light off, you know when the man going to drive up, 
you know how exactly how much time. Baby, don't sweat this. I got that. I know that. I know that. I know that. It ain't nothing that ever got cut off. Because I've been through that, done that, got a t shirt. Let me show you how to do it. Baby, you ain't got to stress out over that. I've been through much more than that, and I'm stronger now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, tribulation, trouble, work patience, right? Made you more consistent, right? Now, consistency employs experience because as you're patient, you get the victory over some things. And as you get the victory over some things, you trouble, work patience. Now, patience is working. Now, I got more experience. I'm getting stronger. I'm getting stronger. I got more experience. Okay, watch this. Come on. Let's see what that experience going to work. And experience works what? Oh. Hope. God, that's the one. See, everybody been lying to you about hope. See, what, what we say hope means is might make it, might not. That is not the definition of hope in the Bible. The definition of hope in the Bible is expectancy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. yes, sir. Right. The word hope in the Bible is I expect. No, 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 no. It's a sure thing. Yes, sir. Right, yes. See, experience work hope. I'm experienced now. Now I have an expectation. See, you, 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 you got to take the baby steps. See, see tribulation? You, you got to let some folks go through trouble now. Ain't no use you got to can't pay every bill for them and think they're going to know how to have no. They, they ain't going to get to the next step. Amen. They're going to go through some trouble. You got to allow them to go through the trouble so that trouble can develop some consistency. You, 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 they might miss that life wheel and the life might get shut off. But the life getting shut off that time have developed in them some consistency to save the money to pay the life wheel. Now that they're paying the life wheel, now they have experience. They have experience paying the life wheel. Now experience have work. What, 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 what did experience work? Now I have an expectancy to pay my life wheel. I ain't no might, might pay it, might not. If all the steps work. But no, we run and catch them at the baby steps. Amen. <laughs> all right. Come on, Pat. Dude, they ain't got no lunch, man. Let me run up here and take it through. Let them miss one more. <laughs> they won't leave it on the dresser no more. God know, God know. See, see, this is the way. This is the way the law says this thing works. Now we want to work it another way, but we have to let people grow up. Amen. He said, when you get full grown in the faith, now you have it. Spend. Amen. Amen. Look what it says. And hope. Expectation makes you not ashamed. That's right. You ain't expecting nothing. You come to church and don't even expect to grow. You come to church and don't expect to learn nothing. You come to church and you don't even expect to have no trouble. So therefore, you're not consistent. You're not patient, consistent. And, and now you don't have no experience. And now you're just so weak. Because you don't expect. See, you ought to expect to go to heaven. That's right. I said expect. I ain't said, I ain't made it. Because the love of God is shared abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. We are not alone. And when we were yet without strength, in due time, this is why you say Christ died when you weren't strong enough. Christ died. He died on the cross. He gave his life while you were yet in sin. While you didn't even have a mind to serve him. He died for us. He paid the price for us. While we were yet in our sin. He died for us. You can see, Adam sinned and man got, got, got placed in this condition where we needed a savior. Man failed. The superintendent said that this morning in Sunday school. He said, what are we being reconciled from? We're being reconciled from being guilty. Yes, 
See, we got this attitude that, that God worked like the court work, that we're innocent until we're proven guilty. No, baby, you guilty until God says you're not guilty. Well, I ain't got to go to church. I ain't being done. I ain't. I've been giving people pies and cakes and apples, and I've been making A's on all my tests. Baby, you still A in your way to hell. You on hell on a roll. Come on, man. You have to accept the finished work of Jesus Christ. A price had to be paid for sin. Sin was in the universe. We were all born in sin, shapen in iniquity. That means that the evil has shaped us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We were right. shaped by that stuff. Yeah. What stuff? The evil stuff we see. Mm -hmm. I sit up there and watch it too, but if I watch enough of it, I'll be shaped by that stuff I watch. Yes. I will. I will. I will. What are you feeding yourself? Sometimes my son tells me, he said, he said, Dad, you know, you got to watch what you eat. Because if you take too much junk in, and then you, that's what you got. They used to teach us in elementary school, you all what you eat. Hallelujah. And, how. and I see a lot of y'all getting y'all shapes all, figures all out, worked out there and stuff. Amen. I'm going to join you soon. I'm coming. Amen. <laughs> Let me stop. Let me stop. See, brother, 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 superintendent know, brother Molder knew that he said, look, you got to tell people what reconciliation, what are they being saved from? You're being saved from a guilty sentence. Wow. Once you reach the age of accountability, you are counted guilty. All right. If your mother and father work the railroad tracks the right way, they are sending you in the direction of salvation. They got you on the railroad tracks of being saved. God should train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not what? Depart. In other words, hand him or them in a direction. It's our job to mold our children in a They don't know no goal to reach for. You got to point at something. Baby, look at that. Don't you want to do that? I'm going to send you over here to drum playing school. I'm going to send you over here to play the violin over here. I'm going to send you over here to learn how to swim. I'm going to send you to college. I'm going to send you to vocational training. What? Why are you ignorant and don't know where you need to go? Amen. They know you need a job when you get through. They know you need to support yourself. And unless they point you in a direction, you'll be amen. Sitting around playing with blocks. <laughs> Come on, brother. Can y'all handle this? Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If somebody don't point you in a direction, man, sometimes I go around and point you. I mean, you ever consider singing in the choir? You ever say, consider being a deacon? You ever consider being a trustee? You ever consider being a treasurer? You ever consider being a secretary? I'm trying to point you in a direction for the work of the ministry. And if I don't point at something, nobody will go at anything. But if you train up a child in the way he should go when he's old, you won't have to run after him. Jesus said this. Let me, let me say why you're not guilty. And uh -huh. what does not guilty mean? Not guilty means when you accept Jesus, that he died on that cross. Uh -huh. You accept that yeah. work. Somebody had to pay the price. Yeah. The price had to be paid by somebody who was sinless. Yes, sir. Who was innocent. Uh -huh. Had to pay the price. Had to become sin for us. Yeah. Had to become our substitute. But it had to be a worthy sacrifice. It had to be without spot or blemish. And that was none of us. Jesus had to come down from above, take on human flesh, and pay the price for sin. Something that we could not do for ourselves. We couldn't do it. Nobody had lived good enough. 
If you broke even one of the commandments, you were headed for hell. Amen. Uh huh. Yeah. I don't care what kind of robe you had on. You didn't care if you was a Pharisee, a Essene, a priest, or not. If you sinned, you broke the law, you were headed for hell. Amen. But Jesus paid the price. And for any who believe in him, thou shalt be saved. And what does the word say again? You, may, you will be justified. You will be pronounced not guilty. The thief on the cross. He didn't have a chance to go to Sunday school. Yes, sir. All right, That's but if you live in and you believe in Jesus, you ought to want to know more about it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Your love for him produces to want to know more about him. To want to live like him. To want to be with him. It doesn't mean that you want to be the opposite of him. You want to be with the one you love. Yes, sir. I'm through, I'm through. Not guilty. Now, he says in the Bible, uh -huh. if you accept what Jesus did, uh -huh. he said you can be saved. Yeah. You ain't got uh, And see, when, when I say these things, people feel like that people are going to grab the negative things and run away with them. Sure will. Yes, sir. And, 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 and that, that's... You know, the notion is if I leave something here that you shouldn't have, that you're going to get it. But our love for God should restrain us, keep us. The Bible says, if you love me, keep my command. If you love me, do what I said to you. All right, man. He didn't put handcuffs on me. He said, if you L O V E, love me. Me. Hallelujah. Jesus hung dead and died. Buried in a borrowed tomb. But early Sunday morning, got up with all power in his hands. And you can be pronounced not guilty. Hallelujah. Is there one today? This is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. The Bible teaches to confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, and thou shalt be saved. If you're here today, this is your opportunity. If you've already been baptized, but you're not active in church or anywhere, and this is the place the Lord is calling you to, come on forward. If you're not in church, don't leave. Amen. Without having an opportunity to accept it. We'll send you wherever you desire to go. But it's important to let the devil know he doesn't have you. Is there one? God bless you today. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Amen.